On today's episode of Fixing the Nasty Red, look at that dash. It's definitely not the worst I've seen, but it definitely needs fix. So we're gonna do that today. Now, before we get too deep into this video, if you wanna get entered to win this truck plus $5,000 cash, all you gotta do is go to lmpgear.com and place an order. Today is your last day for 10X bonus entries and they will not be back for the rest of the giveaway, which ends in a few weeks here. So get in while you can. You can buy a hat like this, you know, read it, read it. You can buy a hat like this, a shirt like this, socks like these, you know you want a pair, all American LMP sock. Buy anything you like on the store and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win. Best of luck to you. But if you want 20X entries guaranteed, if you buy your monthly mystery box and you sign up for that every single month, you get entered with 20X entries into our current giveaway guaranteed. That way you don't have to like worry about missing out on the 20X deal when it goes live. You can just automatically get 20X entries every single month by committing to signing up to a monthly subscription box. Well worth the subscription. You get super cool unreleased merch that nobody's seen yet on the store. If you sign up for the monthly box, you always get 20X and you never have to worry about it every single month. Thanks so much guys. Let's get on to the next topic. So here's the thing about these here second gens that I love so dearly. They are such cool trucks. There's so much I like about them. There's so much people hate about them. I'm not a second gen hater, although I know they have some shortcomings. It, one of those things is the interior. The dash is junk. I mean, they they just, they kind of fall apart. You know, they're kind of, they're kind of known for that. But there's a solution to save your dash and it's actually called a dash skin. It's higher quality than what they did back in the day with these. It's not like the super hard, like brittle plastic stuff. It's actually like a form fitted dash skin that goes over this dash and actually makes everything look brand spanking new. It's not cheesy, it doesn't look ugly. It looks OEM, it fits OEM and you would never ever ever know that your dash was cracked because you know basically all you do is you pop this dash bezel off just a little bit here but you have to take out a couple screws there you pop it away just a little bit and then you take out your bolts here at least this is the way that i do it i take out all the bolts i believe they're 10 mils or 8 mils but i think 10 along the dash there open your door pop out the screw right here and then there's another one on the other side as well and what you do is you release the bezel, loosen it up, and you undo those screws. You take your new dash skin, you put it over top after drilling the new holes in your other one for your bolts to run back through, and you fasten it back in, and it is and it fits like a glove over top of your old one, and it looks brand freaking new. And you would never know that your dash was cracked underneath, and what it'll do is protect it from cracking anymore. So um, like this one, it's got just a couple of big cracks. Like it's got a crack here, it's got a little crack there, a couple, little crack there, a little tiny one in the corner there, and it's got this one here. And like, it sucks because like, you know, when you look at the dash, you're like, well, that's, that's a bummer. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, there is actually something you can do about it. And Rosine's actually had one of these on her dash for years now. And you would never know that her dash was cracked other than the fact that if you took off her other one, you could see a couple cracks in her original dash. And another thing about Nasty Red, turn the key on there. <laughs> um, the fuel shutoff solenoid is starting to go bad, which is a super easy fix, but now you gotta turn off the key. Now as in like this time, it didn't do this the last several times I've driven it. But apparently it started doing it now, so. And it's right down in there. You gotta reach your hand down in here. And you grab the bottom of the fuel shutoff solenoid and you just pull the lever down and it's all vacuum. So as long as your key's turned off and it shuts off the vacuum, you can actually just pull the solenoid down and it'll actually kill the truck because the fuel cuts off. And since everything else is off, when it cuts off, it's it's done. Now, to restart the truck, it's it restarts just fine. But if it would not restart, let's say, if you would turn your key forward to the on position, and then you'd go there and you'd tap the fuel shutoff solenoid lever up, it would, even though the solenoid would be bad, with the vacuum system running through the truck, it'll still hold it up in place and it'll let you start the truck and drive it to get from point A to point B. So 
little fun fact if you did not know that about these trucks the fuel shut off solenoids are <laughs> they're mechanical um, and vacuum driven as well so even though they might go bad unlike in a newer vehicle where if it goes bad you're just you're screwed these um if it goes bad all you do is manually push it up or pull it down and you can still hop in and start the truck up or get out and turn it off you know what i mean so just another reason i love 12 valves but all that aside let's get in here with the new dash and i'll show you what we're gonna do this might actually be a pretty overlooked upgrade for these second gens that's actually quite simple to do here it is pulled out of the box it does come with some foam padding and stuff that's thrown back in there and it does come with some form of silicone rtv stuff to mount it to the dash if you'd like to go that route you can actually use that to try to fix some of these other cracks before you put your new one on so you know like we might go through here and silicone up some of these other cracks and get the dash to hold together in those few other areas let it dry for a little bit put on our new one and the reason that's a good idea is that way it can you know help keep the dash more stable and held together underneath um, that way it doesn't further more crack and then when you remove this someday there's nothing left of your dash underneath but regardless that's the whole point of this so that it fits over your old one and you don't have to look at it anymore and you can have a one piece dash top not a multi-piece from all the crack what i'm gonna do is what i like to go ahead and do is take a drill bit and put a small hole right there in each of these spots and the reason for that is that's going to fall into where your other bolt holes are for your dash top that's already on there and that way you can run the bolts right through there just like you normally would it's already cut out here for your vin plate location that way it doesn't it doesn't cover anything up um, your vents are already cut out your top dash for your little like um, thing to set things on over there is already cut out your side vents and all that other stuff that stuff's already there so all you've got to do if you want to do it the way that i would is drill a small hole in each of those locations. That's the size of the bolt that you're gonna be running through there to hold it in place. And that way it looks OEM when it's back in. Now, when it comes to these bolts along the dash, these actually come out very easy, guys. You don't even need an actual socket wrench. I just have an extension on here to get down to some of those that are a little bit further, closer to the windshield. Um, and then you can just rotate them out by hand. Just get a grip of this thing, spin them out. And that's how tight they are in there. They're not very tight. They're just kind of hand tight. And then um, when you put them back in, do it the same way. You don't need to like crank down on these or you are gonna probably break something. Don't put a big impact on there or even a small handheld impact or your socket wrench. Just put your extensions on there so you can reach it easy like so. Put them on there. And if you can just spin them right out by hand don't even need any kind of tools other than this and this is all you're going to do to create your small hole for your oem bolts to run through um here's one with no hole drilled i'm going to try to hold my phone here while i do it and just kind of look at the old one and see where they put the holes for the bolts on your original and replicate that location just gonna go nice and slow as soon as you poke through you're done And that's how you do it and she looks good as new and after about 10 minutes of work we've got ourselves a beautiful crack free dash just like it did way back when it was brand new and it fits seamlessly to the original configuration up there all the bolts ran back in I mean, other than missing this fuse panel, that's always been gone. But if you look at the rest of it, I mean, the bezel and everything matches up perfect. And I believe it's under 150 bucks, but I'll check real quick and let you know. So yes, these are actually $150 on Amazon. I will try to leave a link in the description below. And the other thing is too, these are made in the USA. That's another reason why I buy these ones over any of the other ones. These are made here in the United States, shipped from the United States. There's not a lot of products that are made like that anymore, it seems like, uh, whether it's vehicle aftermarket or just anything you buy day to day. Um, even some of the groceries you buy at the store, lots of them are imported from other places. So uh, if you wanna buy one of these, 
make your truck look brand spanking new your second gen dodge i don't know what all manufacturers and trucks and vehicles they make these for but this is called dash skins and they make amazing second gen remedies for their for the dashes on those trucks because we all know second gens first gens you know they all get cracked on for these horrible dashes and whatever else but these are an amazing remedy to make your dash look brand freaking new again and it's oem fitment oem look you would never ever know you had to replace it and it looks brand new and yes they make it in several different color options well 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 i do actually have a brand new fuel shut off solenoid for a 12 valve with a p-pump on it i might just be swapping that out right now because if you watch this yeah doesn't want to shut off so what i'm gonna do is turn it off manually And swap out that new solenoid so if you see the wiring harness here coming off just goes to that and unplug that which is actually pretty easy if you have two hands so i'm just going to give that a minute it's really only two small 10 millimeter bolts and a cotter pin at the bottom and all you do is take that one out and here's your new one I, I don't know why this one would be bad. I mean, this is a brand new one. You take the cotter pin out, you run that rod through here, pop the cotter pin back in, and then uh, you just take your two 10 mil bolts and you just bolt it right back in place and plug it back in. That's all you do to it. So um, as long as it's not a fuel shutoff solenoid relay and it's actually just a fuel shutoff solenoid itself, which is this, this should be a really quick and simple replacement and only takes a few minutes. But these things I wanna say might be like 50 bucks. Uh, they're not very expensive. At least they weren't back when I bought this one a long time ago. So uh, let's get to it and I'll show you how easy this is. We're just going through and you guys wanted me to finish Nasty Red. So we're going to go through and just finish all the small quirky things that needed done on this truck that have been getting pushed aside for a long time and just finally getting it wrapped up. You see that rusty little pin right there? You gotta pull that pin out and that'll release that little arm that is slid through that hole there on the bottom of that shut off solenoid. So pull that pin up, get that off. Don't lose it because you're gonna need to reuse it. And then you're gonna take off these two small 10 millimeter, I believe they're 10 millimeter, they might not be, but I think they're 10 millimeter on the left and right side of the shut off solenoid. And this I already unplugged and then it'll just pop off. Remember the whole before thing and like it wouldn't turn off on its own and you know. Starts right up. Let it run for a minute here. Turns right off. And that solenoid, although the cylinder itself was a little smaller, the actual holes themselves did still line up and it bolted right in place put the new pin back in and uh reconnected up to the old harness there and it, it works i don't know why the actual like the solenoid cylinder itself is so much smaller than the old one but um it still works totally fine gets the job done at least we had the part and we were able to get that fixed very easily and for the most part those shut off solenoids rarely go bad but when they do they're not that big of a deal on these trucks because a you can still drive the truck even if they're bad for as long as you want as long as you want to jump out and pop it up and when you turn it off jump out and pull it down to shut your truck off but since they're fully mechanical you can still do that except uh It'll just get annoying after a while. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for all the love and support. Do not forget that it is your last day here for 10 times entries for the black third gen plus $5,000 cash. So if you guys want to get in on that, it is your last day, your last chance. It does end tonight at midnight for the 10X entries and it's gone. And like I said, with mystery boxes, you can always get 20X so you don't miss out on the 20X deal and you'll automatically get 20X entries every single month with that mystery box subscription. Thank you guys so much for all the love and all the support. I'll get you guys in the next video.